Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we are taking a look at the Unify USXG6 PoE network switch. Not just a network switch, this thing is a beast, and it has a lot of really interesting use cases that we're gonna uh, talk about in this video. We're gonna skip the normal unboxing and stuff. I already unboxed this thing because I had to use it for some other testing that I was doing. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's talk about the features of this USXG6 PoE. MSRP on the USXG6 PoE is $599, currently only available in the Ubiquiti store. This is a 10 gigabit PoE++ distribution switch. And I say distribution switch because there's really two main places that you're gonna use this switch. In the case of what I have set up here, I'm using this switch to power a whole bunch of different 802.3 AF and AT devices. So you're distributing power. Like, so if you needed this out in a place where you're going to be powering a bunch of, you know, G4 cameras, or you're gonna be powering a bunch of the XG access points that require higher amounts of power, that's where you're gonna want this XG6 PoE as the core of, you know, that part of your infrastructure. This could also, however, be a core switch, right? So you could utilize the US, uh, the Unify XG6 PoE to have fiber input from your, you know, your dream machine or whatever firewall you're using and then distribute out with these 10 gigabit ports and the extra SFP plus port to other devices, other 10 gigabit devices and sort of make this the, you know, the backbone, the core of your network. It would be a great core switch. I mean, the switching capacity of this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It features four RJ45 ports. Now these RJ45 ports aren't just RJ45 ports. They are one gig, 2.5 gig, five gig slash 10 gig RJ45 ports. Okay, so up to 10 gigabit. Now the 2.5 and the five gigabit is actually interesting. That is a standard called 802.3BZ. And the 802.3BZ standard is essentially just 10 gigabit and then kind of like throttled down. So it's like based on the 10 gigabit ethernet standard, but you're gonna be operating at a lower signaling rate. So you're operating at one quarter signaling rate or one half signaling rate of 10 gigabit. That gets you your 2.5 gigabit or your five gigabit. Okay, so then on top of that, these ports are PoE++, so they're 802.3BT powered, PoE++ powered, uh, up to 60 watts per port. And this thing, unlike other, you know, Unify switches, it comes with this massive power brick. You can see it kind of on the side of the screen here. This power brick is a 210 watt power adapter. You can also power this thing uh, by DC. There's a DC terminal block in the back of the switch as well. So you can use the included power brick or you can power it with DC. In terms of fiber, we have two SFP plus ports. These are gonna be auto sensing one gig or 10 gig SFP plus. Uh, absolutely awesome. I was originally running this thing off of a one gig SFP. It was working just fine. And then when I moved it over here, I didn't have a fiber cable long enough uh, to stretch all the way over here from my dream machine, which is sitting over, uh, you know, about 10 feet that way. Other than that, this switch is layer two and layer three, or I should say the data sheet says it has layer three features, asterisk, right? And the asterisk is that those layer three features, we don't know what layer three features are included and they're not available yet, right? So those are features that will be released in a future firmware update much like the pro line of Ubiquiti switches, which are layer two and layer three, they're just not layer three yet. They're, I guess, doing some more work on that and that will be a software or firmware update in the future. Operating temperature of this switch is anywhere from minus five to 45 degrees Celsius, which is 23 degrees to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So. It's not gonna give you as much range temperature-wise as something like the Unify Industrial Switch. So this is basically for use like indoors, right? You don't wanna have this out in an environment where it's gonna to drop too far below freezing or where it's gonna go above, you know, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So probably not great for, 
your attic if you live in like Phoenix, Arizona, right? You don't want this up in your attic. Uh, okay, and then another interesting thing, uh, this is something I have not seen on other Ubiquiti products yet. There's a console port, right? That's nothing new. So there's an RJ45 console port right here next to the RJ45 ethernet ports. But on the other side over here, down towards the bottom, there's also a USB type C console port. So I have not connected with USB type C yet, but that's interesting, right? So they're starting to include this USB type C console port and it's, they give you both, right? So it's, one, it's not one or the other. Uh, they also included that extra console port. All right, so since I'm skipping the unboxing, what I decided to do instead was basically power up a whole bunch of different devices. And so what I wanna do is I wanna show you what this looks like in Unify, and we'll just go port by port for each of the different devices that I have plugged in here. All right, here I am in Unify. We can see the US XG6 PoE. Uh, we can see the MAC address model, uh, firmware, etc. Now I did have one issue when I first adopted this switch. I adopted it, I plugged it in with fiber. I adopted it and after it didn't adopt an upgrade, it disconnected from Unify completely until I unplugged the fiber and then plugged in an ethernet uh, just into the RJ45. Then it found the switch again and it was fully updated. So the, the adoption and update process worked, but for some reason it lost connection over the fiber. Then I re-disconnected the RJ45 and plugged the fiber back in and it was totally fine after that. So maybe just a weird anomaly or I might have done something in the wrong order or something like that, but I did run into just that one issue uh, when I was originally setting this thing up. Here we can see our current PoE power consumption, even with all of this stuff that I have plugged into this thing, is only at 28.2 watts right now. Keep in mind, this switch can do 60 watts per port on the RJ45, right? So that's awesome. It does have a fan, so this is not a fanless design. Right now we can see the fan is running at about 50% uh, speed. And if we come over here to our ports, we can see some status information. So port one, this is my uplink from my Dream Machine Pro, right? So that's very standard, not running PoE. It's just a one gigabit uplink over to the uh, UDM Pro. Port number two, I have powering this USW Flex switch. So we got one in, this yellow cable here is my computer that I'm working on with Unify. Then we have a third connection that is this uh, G4 Pro camera also being powered by this setup. Again, we've got PoE++, which is 802.3 BT power going into this flex switch and then distributing out among all of these other ports. The last thing that I have plugged in here is this Nano HD access point. So all of this stuff is working off of that one USW and we can see that this one USW flex switch is pulling 13.6 watts. So almost half of the entire PoE output for this entire US uh, XG6 PoE switch is just in this flex right here. Uh, and it's actually quite warm. How hot is that? So yeah, the back of this thing is about 116, 117 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is pushing some power for sure. The XG switch itself is actually quite cool. Uh, we're looking at 84 degrees Fahrenheit on the XG switch on top. Let's see if it's any warmer on the bottom. Not much warmer on the bottom. Um, 102 degrees on the bottom. So not nearly as hot as this Flex, uh, USW Flex. Port three is interesting. Now port three, there's, there's different status indicator lights for all of these ports. So you've got a status indicator for PoE, and that's either gonna be white if PoE++ is being used, or it's gonna be off if PoE is not being used. There's no different colored LED for whether it's 802.3 AF versus 802.3 BT. It's either on or off as far as the PoE goes. Now, on the network connectivity side, there's three different colors. You've got no LED on, that means that there's no link on that port whatsoever. 
or you can have a green LED, which means that you're linked at one gigabit, or you can have a white LED, which means you're linked at 2.5, 5, or 10 gigabit. So in the case of this right here, this is the only device that I have in my office. Boy, this is also quite hot. So this is the Ingenious ECW230. This is a Wi-Fi 6 access point. The interface on this access point is 2.5 gigabit. And as you can see on the front of the Unify XG6 PoE switch, this device is white white next to the RJ45 port that it's plugged into, meaning that it's using PoE and meaning that it has negotiated a rate, a, a, an ethernet speed of 2.5 gigabit. And then finally, we have our next port. Uh, that, by the way, is pulling uh, 8.1 watts to power up the uh, Wi-Fi 6 Ingenious Access Point. And then on port four, we're using 5.3 watts for our ULTE, and we have a separate PoE output powering up a standard G3 bullet camera. This is something that was, I wasn't able to test in my last video on the ULTE because I didn't have an available switch to, uh, to push uh, 802.3BT power out to the ULTE, or I think it needs 802.3, yeah, I think it was BT. I think it needed plus plus, and I only had just standard um, AF or something. I don't remember what the exact case was. Now, a lot of people pointed out in that video that I did have a US 8150 watt switch sitting right behind me while I was recording it. Uh, that switch, though, was for a customer, and I didn't want to have to you know, redo it uh, just for the purposes of testing the PoE output port on the ULTE device. But the ULTE device is working. The PoE output is working just fine. This camera's powered up. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be fine when I'm powering it with 802.3BT. I believe it will also power up a separate camera or separate device if you're powering it with 802.3AT. So there you have it. There is a quick look at the US XG6 PoE network switch from Ubiquiti Networks. This thing is absolutely a beast. I could see this being sort of the core of your network where you have an, in, you know, an uplink from your firewall directly into this switch. And then from there, you can fan it out to like, like I would put a NAS directly on this thing, especially once those layer three capabilities are in play, that would probably be a good idea. And then you can fan it out to other switches in your infrastructure, along with any other you know, more powerful devices. So like uh, the G4 Pro that requires a lot of power, or you know, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 access point that has a 2.5 gigabit network link, uh, network uh, interface on it. So there's a lot of great uses for this thing, but let me know where you would use this switch in your environment if there's something that I didn't mention. I'd love to hear about that down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.